Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another great episode of Bahrain Now, your source for local initiatives, happenings, talents, and trends. I'm your host, Bara Abdallah, here to walk you through our exciting lineup of segments and personalities from around Bahrain. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, with us tonight is a young Bahraini man with a passion for baking and mixing drinks. One of his joys and greatest ones is baking and serving his friends and family with the belief that food brings people together. To share this passion with us tonight is Muhammad Muradi. Good evening, Muhammad. How are you? Very well. How are you? I'm great, Thank man. you for having me on. Oh, definitely. After we heard about your passion, mixing drinks and baking, like we ought to have you on TV. <laughs> They look wonderful. Thank you. Everything looks great. Thank you. You look great Very happy as well. To you. Thank you. Very all happy it's to hear that. It's an entire package all together, <laughs> you know. So tell us a little bit about your passion. Well, so I got into baking very early on uh, when I first went to university. So I would say around 2015 is, is when I started experimenting with it. Right. And the reason that I did it was because so I went to university in France and all of my favorite cakes that I, you know, grew up eating in Bahrain, okay. I just couldn't find there. They do have great pastries and desserts, but they just don't have what we have here. Hmm. So I kind of had to learn to make them just, 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 you know, for the nostalgia of it. Okay. So I experimented with it um, and, you know, they turned out great. And I just kept on, you know, improving on them and, you hmm. know, serving them to friends. And then whenever I would come back here to Bahrain for the summer, I would uh, bake for my family and I would get, you know, positive uh, feedback and, you know, I would just, you know, listen to how it could be improved. Okay. And yeah, that's how it began. Very simple, casual, but very casual, yeah. <laughs> but still a great story, actually. You know, do you think that you being in France has anything to do with you having a great presentation and baking skills? Yeah, I mean, because when you look at all the well-known bakers in France, um, you know, presentation is key, right? right? And it, and it's part of the experience of um, of you know. So when you go to a pastry shop, let's say in Paris, presentation right. is part of the experience. Okay. So um, that kind of reaffirmed to me the importance of you know how if a cake looks good it does influence the way people experience it. Hmm. So, it's, so it's more than just the flavor. I can see like the cakes look amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything French about it at this point? Not at all. Okay, good. No. <laughs> Maybe in future cakes, we'll look at something that's kind of French to it. Yeah, yeah, we will try. <laughs> <laughs> you speak a little bit French or? Yeah, I do, I do. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, can you give us a little bit of uh, your French uh, presentations to the cakes? Just so one or two lines. So oh, uh, that's a gâteau au citrouille. Wow. Oh, et wow. ananas noix de coco. Do please present. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. We'll give you your own show. <laughs> you know, talking about cakes in French. That's, that's Except all Except no one would understand it. So. Well, subtitles will do. Yeah. You know, pretty much will make <laughs> that happen. Man, okay, great. So your friends and your family, they pretty much love having you around, you know, for the cakery and bakery yeah. and the mixing and drinks. Yeah, and so I love it too. So is it only right now for your friends, uh, friends and family or do you want to expand more than that, like open a store or a shop? Mm. Well, I do. Um, so now I just started, you know, taking my cakes to work. Okay. Yeah, and people okay. have, you know, gone crazy over them. <laughs> thank God. You know, it, it was a bit nerve-wracking because, mm. you know, these are people who have no reason to be, uh, you know, to, um, to be uh, kind and say it's good when it's actually not. Okay. But yeah, I'm very glad that I got positive uh, feedback from my colleagues. Right. Um, and in terms of expanding it, I do have a plan to soon start taking orders. Okay. You know, not too many, maybe one or two per week. Okay. Just to kind of play around with it and, um, and see how it goes. Did you start with that yet or? Not yet, but very soon. Okay, great. Well, within this know. month, hopefully. I will definitely want to place an order right now. I'm the first customer. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, what Deal. is your favorite cake to bake? Well, <clears throat> so I divide really my cakes into two categories. Okay. Right? So you have the occasional cakes and the everyday cakes. The occasional cakes are you know, maybe something like this that has more than one layer mm. um, that you have to, you know, make a frosting for and you have to decorate. Right. Um, so this isn't something that, you know, people would want to make every day, mm. but it's a treat. Okay. And then you have the everyday cakes like this one, which are simpler to bake. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's something that you can have every day. It's mm. less uh, sugary, less uh, heavy okay. than the occasional cake. Um, so I really do enjoy everyday cakes. Um, because you know they're very simple to make, not too time consuming. But the mm. occasional cake, when I do bake one once or twice a week, okay. I really do enjoy the process of trying to get the look that I'm aiming for. Very interesting. You know, we've been 
pretty much hosting a lot of bakers here on the mm -hmm. show and we got to understand that sometimes baking can be a challenge depending on the technique the yes. ingredients and sometimes a certain baker would take the challenge mm -hmm. of baking certain cakes yeah do you have that kind of challenge that you want to take upon sometimes um yes i do and actually one uh, uh, very recently about a week ago i posted um, you know one of those ask me a question okay on instagram and someone asked what was the most challenging cake that you had to bake mm. and that was a very interesting question because okay. i haven't been asked that a lot um but yeah it, uh, you know and that was for example for me it was the angel food cake mm. because it's all about the egg whites so okay. it gets its texture and its fluffiness from the egg whites. So beat them too little, your cake is ruined. Beat them too much and it's ruined. So wow. getting that right balance. And it, you know you have to have a perfectly clean steel uh, bowl because if you huh. have even a, you know just, I don't know, a drop of oil, you ruin the cake, right? Oh. So that was very challenging, but it was uh, very rewarding, I'd say. Okay, okay. Do you see yourself like you're taking a certain genre of uh, cake bakery or mm -hmm. like for example is there a difference between let's say a french cake an american one or a european an asian or even an arab where do you see yourself mostly well my favorites really are you know and you know growing up my favorites have been you know what would be considered traditionally american cakes right okay. so you have the carrot cake red velvet right. um it's you know banana so bread the way, I mean, these are my favorites yeah <laughs> and you know and i think there's just something very comforting about american dessert right you know there is less emphasis on having that perfect look because you know to me it's important to have something that looks good right mm. but to, to put in so much energy into perfecting it the look i mean no, i would rather put more of that energy into the taste and the you know and the flavor of the cake while also making sure that it does look good and presentable well, so far you've been doing great, that's Thank for sure, you, you know, Thank in you. both departments, the aesthetics and the taste of it. So what's happening here? All right, so here I decided for this first cake to do something uh, seasonal, um, okay. pumpkin cake. Pu Ooh. Yeah, so you know, every year around October, right into I would say December, I do like to bake stuff with uh, pumpkin. Question, why is it like the season for pumpkin right now? Is there some certain thing, a culture behind it? Mm. I think um, a lot of it is commercial. So you have, you know, Halloween coming <laughs> right. up, you know, right. people associated with that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you have, you know, um, again, other seasonal favorites like Starbucks's pumpkin spice latte yeah. that, that yeah. people associate with, uh, with the autumn and October. Mm. But for me, it's just, I don't know, a flavor profile that feels very warm and cozy. Okay. And um, yeah, so, you know, so it's a cake that has some spice in it. Okay. Oh, you know, it's a very warm and cozy cake. We need to try that. What yeah, do you like think pure we'll comfort food. Huh. <laughs> Dude, we're all about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is a good combination, a good friend to that cake? What kind of drink you would sell? What kind of side dish to that? I would say um, just ha like either hot chocolate, but you know, make sure it's not the heavy kind, yeah. not, not the Italian kind, but you okay. know, your traditional hot chocolate. Because um, this is already a sweet and heavy cake and dense cake. Mm. Um, otherwise, for me, honestly, my personal favorite with any of these cakes would be just pure black coffee or espresso. Ooh. Just to kind of balance out the sweetness because you know, I do have a sweet tooth, but yeah. you know, I don't like it to be overwhelming. Oh man, if I do that, I'm gonna spike my dopamine so high. <laughs> I mean, it's worth a try, right? I was like, Brr, what's yeah. going on? Oh, oh, it must be the cake. Hey, yeah. I'm mad, what did you do? <laughs> what about this cake? So this one is inspired by one of my favorite beverages, um, the uh, Virgin Pina Colada, okay. right? So um, the, um, the flavor, I mean, you know, the combination of uh, coconut and pineapple works so well, not just in drinks, in mm. drinks, desserts, you know, even in, you know, foods and some cuisines, right? So when you look at, you know, Polynesian cuisine, they do use that a lot, right? That combination. Um, so, you know, so one day I woke up, I said, you know what? I want to make, I want to make a cake that's inspired by that drink. Huh. So I, you know, threw stuff around in the kitchen. This came out and um, I served it to my mother. Um, um, you know, she's the first uh, critic when my best okay. friend isn't around. Yeah. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, she tried it. She loved it, took it to work. Her colleagues went uh, crazy over it. <laughs> so it became a staple. Amazing. I mean, beside all of that, do you have a day job? Do you study or what do you do? Yes, I do. I work in a semi-government agency. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that is my full-time job. Okay. So okay. yeah, but I found the balance between, uh, you know, doing this and that and, and my full-time job. Amazing. Amazing. Which I think is important to do. Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, uh, I say sometimes I find it very hard to do that time management between mm. both lives, but you, you do what to love so you can carry on with your own identity. Yeah. I mean, that's very important. You're absolutely right. Exactly. Now, Cakes are amazing. Drinks. Yeah. What's happening in that department? All right. So do you want to know the background of it? 
I don't mind at all, actually. Yeah. All right. So uh, you know, uh, to put it to put it shortly, I mean, this is something that I started experimenting with very recently. Okay. With the second lockdown, mm, I was yeah. born at home and I had a few syrups, different flavor profiles. So okay. I said, you know what, I'll, I'll try to mix this with this kind of juice and let's say, you know, this fruit. Right. And see how it works, and you know, trying to find combinations that work together. Then it kind of, you know, very quickly developed into an obsession. Okay. And then I went in and I would, you know, buy syrup after syrup after syrup. Like, right. you know, weird flavors that aren't, <laughs> you know, traditional. So you wouldn't expect, like, you know, people to have elderflower in their home, right? Okay. Um, so, you know, stuff like that. Um, elderflower, lavender syrup. Um, but, um, yeah, so I experimented with it and I okay. had fun with it. And, you know, my friends love seeing me mix the drinks, my family as well. So, yeah, but here I have uh, two of my favorites. Your favorites, what's that? Yeah, so the first one is the uh, lavender cooler. All right. It has lavender in it. Um, I love lavender, lavender because lavender. I love botanical uh, profile notes. Interesting. Right? Yeah, so uh, lavender, um, a little bit of rose, not too much. Huh. Um, lime and tonic water. Just so it's a very botanical uh, okay. drink. Yeah. And the second one is what I named Summer Super. It's okay. so good. Um, it's very citrusy. It has um, fresh orange juice in it, fresh mm. lime juice, mm. and a little bit of grenadine syrup. Which How is made with um, a pomegranate. How about we try? Sure, go ahead. Okay, you pick a drink, I'll pick a drink. All right. Let's go with this. Uh, I'll, I'll pick this. All right. So how was life? Very good. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's how I feel right now. The, the drink makes me feel like I just want to <laughs> chill, relax right now. Yeah. It's a good drink. It's Thank good drink. you. Thank you. This one was uh, actually inspired to me by the transition from summer to fall, right? So right. it has, you know, uh, summery fruits, citrus fruits, lime and orange, yeah. but also has pomegranate, which is typically a, a hmm. autumnal fruit, right? So it's, so, so it kind of marks the transition. It does, between the it seasons. really does. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we're based, like, we're pretty much consumers, mm -hmm. but sometimes we don't take our time to actually just taste and enjoy a yeah. drink, you know? It's like, oh, let's just g give it a drink and all yeah. that. But the mix you have here is really interesting and it's fresh. Yeah. Love that, I love that, Thank man, you. amazing stuff. Yeah, it's part of the experience. Like when I'm mixing for people, I like to see them, you know, so, sorry, I mean, I like for them to watch me mix and explain the flavor notes because that really, you know, um, it's, it's part of the experience when they right. know exactly what's going in there. And like you said, sometimes you just drink something without really thinking of what's in it, right? Right. But here, when you're aware of the ingredients, it's really a whole it's other experience, yeah. you know, and you have the music in the background yeah. and, you know, I'm getting a kick right now. It's, uh, they, it's so interesting when you mix certain juices in a, in a very healthy manner. Mm -hmm. You feel different. Yeah. You know, and you know your body's receiving some goodness. Where yeah. then the extra sugary drinks sometimes we put in our system mm -hmm. that spikes our system so high. I'm like, oh, what's going on? But yeah. this is different. This is like very subtle. It's good. And it's very interesting. Would that go well with your cakes? I mean, normally I don't serve drinks with cakes just because mm. I don't want one to outshine the other or, right. you know, one or, or, you know, or to have just too much sweetness all around. But I think if you can, I mean, you may have noticed here that, you know, the serving sizes are very small. Okay. Because usually I'm, you know, making more than one drink. Right. I don't want people to have uh, too much of one thing. I understand. And to just to kind of, you know, appreciate every single drink. You know, I want to give a big shout out to your friend Abdullah for taking the hits all the time <laughs> <laughs> for every cake and every drink and everything you experiment. Yeah. So he's a really good friend. He's a good keeper. Yeah, he is. <laughs> so with all that being gone and said and beautifully presented. Thank you. Any last words to your viewers? I mean, and future plans, of course. Yeah. So my future plans, um, so I'll get into that first. My future plans, I mean, uh, more than just getting into the food and beverage industry. I think if you go through my Instagram profile, um, one thing that you will notice is that I'm also passionate about kitchenware. I just okay. love that stuff, right? Um, so I do want to have, you know, uh, someday, hopefully soon, All right. uh, my own, you know, um, my own online e-commerce platform where okay. people can find my favorite, you know, uh, glassware, um, mm. kitchenware, bakeware, baking equipment. Um, and, um, and yeah, so that's uh, for my future plans. All right. And um, as for my message, I would say just, you know, if you're passionate about something, go after it don't overthink it and you know before i um before i actually opened my account to the public and uh, my friend here was telling me you're overthinking it because i wasn't sure if i should mm, do that mm. but when he said just do it and i did and it worked very well i um, mean you know the growth has been amazing all right you know for uh, the short two months that i've been doing it amazing yeah um so i would say just do it um just so you don't go through a what if scenario in the future right 
Right, right. Those are the killers, right? Yeah. Those are like that. They put a damper on your process. Yeah, absolutely. Understand. Well, Mohammed, it's been great. It's been a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun and good drinks, good talk. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And we can't wait to actually have, you know, a delivered cake from your side. Inshallah. Definitely. Thank you for having me. Yes. It's been it's been a great conversation. It's been a pleasure. Definitely. Thank you. <laughs> a good drink and a good cake. All that with Mohammed Muradi taking place in an interview right here on Bahrain Now. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure right now to have with us an uprising esport personality, a young Bahraini. He's a coach, an analyst, and he's a caster all the way in the esport world, blowing up with a lot of energy. Abdurrahman, aka Tuxedo, good evening. Good evening, Bara. Hello. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's it's been a long journey. Like I can't express my feelings oh, right man. now. Uh, you spoke like a caster. Good evening, but uh, hi. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love yeah, that. Let's go. It is amazing how you are pretty much taking the esport in a different, I would say, different way, different genre, different aspect. You've been coaching for a while yes. for the team. Uh, Piercer Esports. I was amazing. the head coach there, and I managed to get the first team of Valorant. Okay. Uh, for that team as well. Um, apparently, I had the decision. Uh, it was out of my hands mm. to pick either coaching or casting. So oh, wow. I oh, picked wow. casting since it's uh, really engaging, gets you more, gets you more engaged with the viewers. Oh, definitely. I mean, you tried being an athlete, an esport athlete. Yes. You tried even organizing some esport events on the side. For you sure. You tried casting on the side as well and yes. coaching. Yes. And even YouTube at some point. Yes. But the most that you felt you felt yourself like ad and you felt that you know you have your energy for is. Casting. Casting. Why is Cast that? Yeah, casting and streaming. Uh, streaming uh, gives me the confidence and get me used to okay. the camera. Okay. Which is something normal. Every person will right. definitely have issues with the right. camera at first. So I picked casting because I have an, a lot of knowledge. Mm. I have a lot of information. Right. I have a lot of experiences through the esports and not in a single game. I have played competitively in every single game, whether it was a MOBA, an FPS. Wow. Uh, an MMO, there is like this PvP arenas, 5v5s, right. Right. every single game I played was competitive, whatever mm. it was, with a keyboard and mouse <laughs> or a joystick, so okay. it was all competitive. Okay. What, what games did you pretty much put your time into the most? Uh, the most in my uh, career yeah. was Counter-Strike, I think. CSGO, of course, yes. of course, CSGO. Uh, it was not CSGO, <laughs> it was actually 1.6. What? I had. Yes, I was back in the day, I was 12 years old, Okay. and once I I reached 16, I had like 11k hours. 11k that's hours. That's a lifetime, man. Yes, that's <laughs> a lifetime. And uh, the second game was League of Legends, for sure. Oh, League of Legends, yes, okay. Yes, I played it for six years continuously. Oh, man, that's a long time. Yes. League of Legends and making it big. I mean, one of the top games right now in esports is definitely when it comes to esports, is you got your League of Legends, CSGO, Valorant, Valorant's PUBG, Fortnite is still holding on as well. I would say PUBG Mobile is, are doing very well actually right. in the esports scene, especially right. going through mobile. They have insane amount of viewers. Oh, oh man. I mean, I still remember when I hosted the uh, old championships in Saudi Arabia in 2019. And I'm like, what is happening here? Yes. It's a bit too big. But you know, one thing that I've been telling people about is that, you know, hosting is one thing, but casting has its own charm. I've been telling everybody, if you want to go into gaming, be a caster and seeing you doing that is amazing so now tell us a little bit about your journey you know being a caster what game do you see yourself more casting into yes so basically since i have a lot of experiences right okay it makes me very flexible with the games i pick to, to cast or analyst it will take me like a few like few days like two mm. days to mm. follow up with the updates of the meta right. and right. i can easily go as an analyst and a caster so mm. the thing is is just you have to find these keywords that right. will help you while casting to make your cast uh, very flexible and the viewer will be actually very engaged and enjoying okay. whatever you are casting on right. and will be enjoying your voice and that's how we get uh, our fan base as casters people mm. enjoy your casting uh, the tone of your voice once well, you, of course once yeah. you hype it up or once you feel so down and going back and forth and uh, hyping it up oh my god what's happening yeah. it's all yeah. connected uh, with each other so it's amazing as a caster what i've seen you do as well I still remember in ijan 2015 and 16 as well yes. you were very informative 
You know, it's just like hyping us like, oh, to the right, to the left. Oh my God, what's happening here? Oh, no. yeah. You were more than that, you know? You, need you the were energy. actually very informative. You actually were giving information about the players, the e-athletes, the game itself. You were very knowledgeable when it comes to CS as well. And now you're doing the same thing for Valorant? Yes, since uh, I started the, with the beta, I said, okay, this is it. Like, this is my chance. This is the game that right. I'm going to master. Either right. I become a player or a coach or a caster or an analyst. So mm -hmm. I started mm -hmm. as a coach, as you can see, right. Right. and then went into casting. Uh, it was very interesting because I had a lot of energy. I had this passion about, the, especially this game since it's starting new, mm. FPS. I'm very f familiar with FPS gaming. Right. And uh, I just went through it. And here we are, like, uh, Love it. We're crushing yet, let, let's say it. we're crushing yet. No, yet. We're, we're proud of you, honestly. Thanks. Because the thing is, when it comes to the Middle East and the MENA region, we don't have a lot of prominent casters, the people that we know of, that you know, they are pretty much taking this as an actual career. So you want to be, you might want to be the first actually hopefully, to do this. You know, yeah, pretty much yeah. what's happening here, you might be one of the first, definitely, to actually take this lead. And whatever you're doing right now, everybody's going to follow your league as a caster. Now, even though in the MENA region, we don't have enough casters that are known to be casters, mm -hmm. but do you pretty much, let's say, follow other people's steps when it comes to, let's say, the European and the American uh, uh, esports scene? Like, is there a certain casters that you like to follow with? Uh, and not really. I do, I do really love listening to them and okay. how, uh, the way they cast and see the difference in between styles, like my mm, style of casting. Mm. Uh, there is a couple of, uh, for example, Tunisian casters are very good and right. Moroccan casters, which are very good. And there's like this PD uh, Egyptian casting, oh, for yeah. example. So, uh, Morgan, I think you met him. I in know Morgan, Zumania. yeah, he's an awesome yeah. guy. Yeah, so uh, there is a lot of talents in the MENA region in general. But the thing is, everyone is just going his way. That's the, good, that's the nice thing. Right. Like everyone's trying to prove himself in a different way. And it's insane, like how we are so different, yet we still cast the same game or the same, uh, we are in the same field. Um, I mean, I love it that you actually mentioned Morgan as I worked with him in Egypt several times. He is very talented in his casting and yes. it is the speedy kind of type, definitely. Oh, he goes yeah. down with the energy, then he goes up all of a sudden. Yes. Goes down and goes up. This is he's so phenomenal. Fast. He's so fast. I don't think, I think he's the fastest caster in the mini region <laughs> at the moment, yes. <laughs> Where do sure. you put yourself and what, kind of, what style is your style? Where do you uh, see yourself? I would say uh, I'm more into the uh, strategies that are happening in the specific round. So that's actually a good thing when you have uh, a play-by-play -play caster, which is the one that goes with the uh, action that's happening. And then I jump in seeing what actually happened the past round and why did they actually uh, had a disadvantage against in this situation and wow. what happened wrong, wow. which is very important to really actually find those small details while the viewer is just enjoying the kills, for example. And mm. he missed that small detail that actually made that fight possible for that person so wow. it's uh, it's really you need a wow. lot of focus and it's challenging we do this sometimes for 12 hours straight yes i saw that and you had an amazing amazing experience in turkey oh, yeah. as you're pretty much right now collaborating with riot games congratulations Thank that's you. amazing and you working with Nasser Esports as well yes. and other esports sadly, association. Sadly, I didn't have time with Nasser Esports mm. like uh, to cast their offline games. Right. Uh, so um, hopefully I, I'll get the chance to uh, get Nasser Esports oh, out there okay. as well. Like I said, Offset, you didn't even scratch the surface yet. Time will be an issue with you right now. Oh, yes. So time <laughs> management is going to be your biggest skills to actually acquire in the coming times. So now, unfortunately, I wish we had more time to talk about you and everything with the eSport world and your journey. But any last words to your viewers? Oh, yes, for sure. Um, I'm happy first to be here again. It's and uh, um, I'm happy to be a Bahraini. Uh, things has been very easy just because I am a Bahraini nationality. Um, visas, uh, traveling, it's been very flexible. And they allowed us to get all the vaccination we needed and everything. Uh, it helped a lot, especially in the what we're going through right now. Mm. And I would like, uh, I'm very happy to be one of those influencers or uh, the one of the people that will actually get the young people to actually get their eyes on actually casting. Right. Or uh, being an analyst and uh, build their career wow. from there. Wow. Not just a player, you have multiple options. Definitely. I mean, I've been emceeing eSport events for as long as I remember, but I know if I'm gonna go back to be more active in something, hopefully it's gonna be casting and you may teach me a little bit, one or two tricks. Yeah, sure. 
Awesome. Why not? Awesome. I'm, I'm down. Do I'm down. Maybe Street Fighter. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> if it's still going to be around, the hopefully. <laughs> looking forward for the new fighting game that Riot Games are playing. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I, I need an appointment with the <laughs> Ticket Master for uh, oh, some man. education. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah, he actually been here as well, and he got a lot going on as well for himself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been Definitely. going like back and forth, traveling right. around the world, yes. Well, proud of him and proud of you. It's been a pleasure having you right here on Bahrain. Pleasure is mine. Definitely. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, esports is happening, but what's more exciting, we have Bahraini personalities making it in the esports scene. All that took place with Tuxedo right here on Bahrain now. Phone photography is the talk. Let's learn some great tips from Aqil, a passion photographer that portrays his vision with a simple click of a button on his phone. Well, good evening, Aqil. How good are evening. you? Good evening. I'm good. How are you? I'm great, man. I'm great. So, you know, the thing is, we had a lot of photographers, but it always overwhelmed me with all their great gear and, you know, when they take their time with photography, the lighting, and the entire set. Mm. I would love to be a photographer, but you know, when I saw what you have to go through to be a professional photographer, it's kind of like overwhelming for yeah. me. But you came in a different aspect. You are a mobile phone photographer. Tell us exactly. more about that. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mobile phones are the future. It keeps on improving its mm. tech and it's really accessible. It makes it a really great tool to take photographs with. Uh, amazing, amazing. I mean, it's like, you know, I look at my phone yeah. and then I see all these features and terminologies that I don't even know or even pronounce. And then it's like, oh, you want a portrait? Do you want a panorama? Do you want like night vision? I'm like, oh, I just want to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> but it's more than that, yeah, right? I mean, you can actually take a very professional picture with a phone. Yeah. Like I know even people creating content by just using their phone and they edit it as well. Exactly. And all a little workstation with called the phone. Yeah. So now, you chose to become a phone photographer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, was it because it's easy? Is it accessible? Uh, I think it has to do a lot with my exposure to smartphones mm. when I was a young child. Okay. Uh, I used. I remember using my dad's N95. Do you remember that Nokia N95? Wait, wait. The gaming uh, yeah. phone? Do that? Uh, you had that? Yeah, oh, you're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. I would dream to have one. I'm like, oh. Then, uh, I remember taking photos and videos on it and just sharing it with my family and friends. Yeah. And they really liked it and I just kept going from there. Do, do you think it's going to come to a point that people will be hired for their phone photography skills? I guess so, yeah. Because it, as days go by, it just keeps getting more techier, you know. Yeah, okay. It's more accessible and uh, exactly. Okay. Producer. More techier, I like that word. <laughs> I like techier, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what is your favorite phone to use when it comes to photography? Uh, right now I own a Huawei P30 Pro. Okay. But I'm looking forward to upgrade to an th iPhone 13 Pro Max soon. Oh, Inshallah. would that be better? <laughs> yeah, of course it will be. The video features <laughs> on it are just amazing. I, I know a person who actually made a little movie using an iPhone. Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it was 4K. It got actually screened on a cinema screen. I'm uh, like, what? That yeah. was an iPhone? <laughs> so, okay, you know what? You have your phone on you right now? Yeah. How about you take a photo of the place, of me maybe, sure. you know? <laughs> and then we'll see the phone photography skills sure. you got and why is it really a big deal? Okay, so, so you know, how would you gonna do? Well, what's the settings? I have a suggestion for everyone. For it's, everyone, yeah. yes. It's just to clean your, uh, the, Lens. Lens, okay. Yeah, a lot of people I know who don't do this. I don't do this. <laughs> yeah, just clean it and you will see the difference yourself. Okay, first it's, step, it's clean your lens. Yeah, your okay. uh, fingertips have oils on them and okay. just get stuck on it. All right, yeah. all right. The cleaning so. part is really important. Okay, so now after cleaning the lens, entering to the camera. Yeah. So what's the next tip? Uh, I'll show you how what an uh, automatic mode photo can do. All right. Just how easy it is to just take a okay. photo. Okay. Okay. Right now I'm shooting in a okay. way like I, I'm, I don't know what's going on. It's like. <laughs> okay. Sure. Candid. <laughs> it's all about find, finding the right frame and the right angle. Mm. Just clicking. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Yeah. cool. Do you want right. to see it? Do I want to see it? 
Hey. hey! I'll show you what it looks like after the post processing. So you even can retouch it using your phone yeah, as well? Yeah, I do everything I do with my phone. Okay, great, yeah. great. So now a lot of people actually use their phones to take pictures, yeah. and they whether it's Instagram, whether they're on phones, Snapchat, and they always are heavily depending on filters. Yeah. Now, but without the filters, can actually use the phone with its own features? Because like, I own a Samsung, right? And when it has the pro uh, feature to it, mm -hmm. and I get lost. <laughs> How can I make my phone pretty much work for me in the sense of photography? Like, should I learn YouTube? What yeah, should I do? YouTube, it, everything is accessible on the internet now. Just, mm. it's not like rocket science or something. It's just a simple technique. Okay. Just, uh, I'll just uh, settings a bit and you'll right. be good to go. How long you been doing photography with your phone? I don't recall, it's been years. It's, I told you, since the N95, I just keep <laughs> shooting and people started liking it and okay. I just kept going from there. Right. You never thought of going to a professional camera like no, a Sony? Not as of now. Inshallah in the future. Would you want to make that leap maybe somewhere? Sure. Okay, yeah. great. What do you, in your perspective, what do you think is the best phone for photography? Uh, it depends on what you need. Okay. Uh, for if, if I wa have to say one name, Mm. Uh, overall, I would say the iPhone 13 Pro Max, okay. which just got released now. Okay. It, okay. The, the video is really, really another level. <laughs> it's just... Uh, is, is there like a special kind of events right now, or there a special kind of competition for just phone photography in the world? Uh, I don't think so. Mm. I, 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 I feel like it's not as much looked upon like for professional photography. Right. Yet, inshallah, in the future, it will be a bit more recognized. All right, all right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for that picture, by the way. Send it to me on my email. <laughs> sure. That's actually not bad at all. So any last tips and uh, I would say advices to your viewers before we wrap it up? Uh, just try more, experimenting more and do the stuff you like to do. Just don't be scared of fa uh, failing. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. This is my first interview, by the way. Oh, well, and you're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> you took uh, a picture of me. I'm like, oh, wow, live. <laughs> so just uh, this is out of my comfort zone. Like mm. growth doesn't happen in your comfort zone. Just seek discomfort and seek what you want. All right. So. Now I feel like taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I got a phone too. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Clean my Clean. lens I, first. I'll give you the. Please, 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 please. The, This is the cloth you get with your specs and okay. shades. Ah. The microfiber one. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to take a picture of the camera in my outro. <laughs> well, Aqid, thank you so much, pretty much, for inspiring us actually to be photographers. Using thank you for having me. Uh, it's, it's, a it's been a great pleasure to talk with you. Oh, uh, it's the pleasure is all ours. Thank you so much for thank being you. with us right here on Bahrain now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a picture right now. Three, two, one. There you have it. So mobile photography is a thing and will be a thing in the future. All that took place with an interview with Aqil right here on Bahrain Now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, We've made it to the finish line. A huge thank you to all of our guests for joining us tonight. And another huge thank you to all of you watching us at home. As always, be sure to reach out to us on our social media accounts shown below. We love hearing from you. And this was Bara Abdullah. Till next time, Bahrain. Good night and God bless.